to the honky tonk. There she was, boots and all, shooting down some fireball. Copper head just came on. She walked out on the dance floor and pointed, and she said, "Come get you some." Now, girl, I can't help but stare, days and dooms. I swear, I can't dance and I don't care. Can I two step you right out of here? You're looking for some fun later on. Walking to the honky tonk, there she was, boots and all, shooting down some fireball. Copper head just came on, she walked out on the dance floor and pointed, and she said, "Come get you some." Now, girl, I can't help but stare, days and dooms, I swear. Right out of here, you're looking for some fun later on, girl. Come get you some. Come get you some, girl. You don't know what you do to me. You love your drugs, girl. I got your fix. Come get you some. Come get you some. Some old boy comes in feet tall.
And we are going live. We are live. What's up, pickers and grinners? Welcome to the Fred Job. It's a talk show where we get down to the bones of the guitar, and anything with strings is fair game for our discussions. I'm going to introduce you to my friend, my co-host, Brandon Edwards, the master luthier at Frizzell Guitars and the owner of Frizzell Guitars. Hey, what is up, everybody? And let me do... Let me introduce my super awesome co-host, Jonathan McWhorter. All things real estate, all things strings, harmonica. He is one of the finest musicians I know, and I'm glad to be co I'm glad to be co-hosting the show with him. So I'm honored. All right. Glad to be here, man. And uh, Michael. Hope everybody's ready. <clears throat> rock on to you too, Michael. <laughs> all right. So, uh, first thing I want to take care of is I want to take care of this product spotlight. Uh, what you got for us, man? Today, I'm going to talk about Eastman Guitars. Uh, I don't know if you all are familiar with Eastman Guitars. Um, the company's been around in the guitar world since around 1992. Uh, there's a guy, his name is, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right, is Ken Nye. And uh, he founded the, the company in 92. He went to Boston School of Music. Who? He started this thing out of the back of his car, man. And uh, I'm telling you. Don't you want an Eastman? I've got an Eastman, and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. Um, these guitars, man, they're... You know, if I wanted to buy a guitar of the quality that I can get in the Eastman, if I wanted to buy it in a, a big brand like Martin, which I've, I've got Martins. I love Martins. But... Uh, it would cost around probably thirty six hundred maybe, and I bought mine for fourteen hundred. I'm gonna show it to you. They, they use all solid woods in most of their stuff. Uh, this is a solid East Indian rosewood guitar with a. Uh, you can see that rosewood, and this is Adirondack spruce, uh, which I know if you all are guitar nuts, you know what that means. Um, here's the headstock logo. And is that real mother of pearl? It is real mother of pearl. Uh, they use nitro finish on their guitars, um, on most of them that I've seen. Um, man, if you're familiar with Blue Ridge, uh, 
Blue Ridge Guitars. It's another company. Uh, and I will tell you, these guitars are made in Beijing. Um, they are a Chinese company. Uh, it's a family company. Um, Blue Ridge Guitars is a similar company to this. Uh, Eastman is... I like the Eastmans better than the Blue Ridges that I've had, but I, I love Blue Ridge too. But if, if you're looking for a guitar that's a blue-collar price tag with a high quality of craftsmanship, uh, they're worth checking out, man. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I played your Eastman on several occasions. I love it. I mean, it's yeah. a great little sound of guitar. Yours is a parlor style, right? Am I mistaken? Mine is, mine is a parlor style, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a great little guitar. It's got a punch to it. Got a punch to it. Yeah, I, I play it all. I play it more than I play anything else I have. Yeah, so another question for you. Uh, well, I guess uh, I guess uh, now we're going to go into this local stuff, ain't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah, I'll start off, I guess. So I'm going to start off. We're going to add some local stuff in here. If you're not from Danville, Kentucky, or you're not from the area, that's okay. If you're ever visiting through or coming to see the shop or whatever, this is a place you want to go. My place is going to be Harvey's, downtown Danville. It's located at 120 South 4th Street. And they've got really good food. they got like a comeback burger. They've got really good drinks. Good place to go sit down and watch the game, to have a drink, meet some friends. It's where friends gather. You know, it's got a cool, atm cool atmosphere yeah. down there. Right? It's, it was in the old, uh, if anybody knows, it was in the old Freddy's building. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cool place with a cool atmosphere and a good place to listen to live music on occasion. Wednesday nights they have karaoke, which, or, which is pretty cool. This week they're doing like an 80s theme. So it's a really solid place for people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, I and, mean, and they, they've, they've, um, how long have they been there? They've been there for they, several years yeah, now, right? Yeah, and they also offer carryout, I'm pretty sure. Their number is 859-209-2626. You know, get some takeout if you're not able to stop in. You know, they have a lot of local beers on, on tap, as, as, you know, as well as uh, bourbon. So go in, uh, tell them Brandon at Frizzell Guitars and Jonathan at Frizzell, uh, sent you down there, and uh, they'll hook you up with some of the great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> go down there and check that out. Um, I've got one, too, and I guess it's Restaurant Tuesday because uh, <laughs> we're both covered restaurants. But uh, a place that I like to check out, uh, it's a fairly new restaurant uh, to Danville. It's, it's not been there a, whole, a, a real long time, but it's called Mi Pueblo. They've got, if, if you're in the mood for Mexican food, give these guys a chance. I know most people get stuck on their Mexican restaurant of choice, and, and they never, they don't like, a lot of people don't like trying the, trying the other one in town, but this place is good, man. Uh, they've got two locations. One of their locations is uh, 140 Stanford Avenue in Danville, Kentucky. The other one is 3678 South Danville Bypass, and that's called Mi Pueblo 2. They've got killer fajitas. They've got killer tacos. Go down there and try it, man. You will not regret it. Yeah, so, uh, and just to throw this out there, we are not paid or sponsored to name these places out. We are telling them because we are wanting to give you not only a spotlight into the music world, but a spotlight into our local our local scene Yeah. and what we like. Yeah, we're, we don't get paid to do this. This is just the place that I go to whenever I go... When I go to Danville and, and I'm getting ready to come back home from picking my wife up from work or something, I go straight to Mi Pueblo if I'm thinking about Mexican food, and I'm out of there quick with a carryout order, and we love it, man. We love it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, I think it's, uh, I, I like it. So, so uh, next we're going to go on to the main topic for today, and I'm excited about that main topic Uh We've kind of we kind of blew through our our beginning part, so we're gonna really dive deep in this main topic. So, Jonathan, what do you got for us today in your main topic and our main topic? Our main topic today it's kind of a, a split topic because uh, there's two parts to it. But our main topic is acoustic and electric amplifiers, as well as the pickups in acoustic and electric guitars. Uh, man. You know, there's tons of killer brands out there of, of acoustic amplifiers, and there's there's more than one way to do this too. Uh, I will talk about that first. Uh, 
I'm more of an acoustic guy, so I'll talk from that perspective. But uh, you've got a couple choices. I mean, you can. Some people play plug directly into a PA system. Uh, some people use an amp and mic it. Some people, when they do small venues, they just use an amp. You know, they got a two-channel amp that's got a dedicated XLR channel for a microphone, and they sing and play through the same amplifier, and it works great. Uh, but we're going to talk about a few of the companies that put some of the best stuff out there and a few that put some of the most affordable stuff out there. Yeah, of course. I mean, everybody, and this is what I say. This is, this is what I, my, my thoughts here is this goes for both of our, all of our topics we're covering today. Everybody has their own opinion of what they like or what they've used before. And then there's stuff that's just generally out there that is a really good quality product that no matter what, it's just all around a great sounding thing that it's, you know, I've even, I've, I think I showed this in, in one of our previous episodes, but I've got an acoustic amp right here behind me that I use all the time. It's a little acoustic sonic, uh, made by Fender. It's a tiny little amp. I paid less than a hundred bucks for it. I think, uh, man, it sounds great. I can plug a mic in one side, guitar in the other side. I can, drive the household crazy right here with man. those uh james taylor covers you love to do yeah with with all the covers i love to do and a few originals but yeah, yeah of course uh he's a heck of a musician by the way guys if you haven't he writes a lot of pretty cool stuff and he's a he's a great singer and songwriter thank you i i try that's all i'm gonna say I, i'm still a beginner in my eyes <clears throat> So, uh, what's your what's your acoustic? I mean, I know you you play electric a lot, but if you had to choose an acoustic amp right now, what would you? Choose? I mean, I play a lot more acoustic anymore than I do electric. Sadly. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, sad. I mean, sad. it's not sad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, guys, I'm right there with Jonathan on the spectrum. I'm an acoustic guy. I'm an acoustic nerd just as much as I'm an electric nerd. I'm a guitar nerd. You're a guitar nerd. And everything. But I, but I love acoustic guitars. They've got a special spot in my heart. And every me time too. I see a pretty acoustic, it kind of makes me drool and think I'll take my money. But <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, I've, uh, I've played on the spectrum at church. Then I've also played on the spectrum of playing out. And sometimes I'll hook in direct. There's only been one time I can remember I had a, uh, had a custom. It was one of the bigger custom acoustic amps I used at a show. And uh, we we mic'd it up still, but we used yeah. it, and because they didn't have a they didn't have an extra spot for direct input, so gotcha. I mean it sounded okay, I mean it didn't yeah. sound bad, but uh, I've always kind of directly inputted. But I mean custom for me, and I know I'm going back to say this again because I have a soft spot for custom amps because I got a custom cab, but yeah. I've just always something about custom has just really been really dro- yeah drove me nuts. I mean, but Fender makes, yeah, affordable. Fender's made some great, like you said, the acoustic sonic stuff. I yeah. mean, there's some affordable alternatives out there that don't have to break the bank. They get you a great yeah. quality live sound. And if and if you're uh, if you're one of these guys that just has to have the the high end, known to be high end stuff. I mean, you can go out there and spend as much money as you want to spend. You can go out there and look at brands like AER. I mean, it's top quality stuff, man, but it's, you know, you're going to pay for it. Now, here's a question I'm going to ask you, and I don't know this, and I'm going to sound stupid if somebody else knows this. Does Mesa Boogie have an acoustic amp? They do. Okay. I know they make electric amps, and, you know, I'm not, I'm well versed in their electric amps, but I'm not well versed yeah. in their acoustic amps. Have you ever you heard it? Because went direct. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah. ever, have you ever heard anything I, about it? I I have not heard. I've read about them. I, man, Mesa makes some awesome stuff, so I'm sure it's top of the line. But um, no, I have not heard one or played through one. Okay. But they yeah. make killer stuff, man. Their electric amps are just. Whew. I mean, we'll talk about that. And I had one in the shop for repair not too long ago, man. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, like, it really, it really made me like, just it was so beautiful. Yeah. And you know, uh, I tell you somebody another amp that I hadn't heard many people talk about their amps, but PRS, uh, they make some amps. I know, like their plug-in amps that a lot of people 
use yeah. when they're recording. Man, those are they have. I've got a friend that uses them all the time. He loves them, man. Oh yeah, of course. And uh, so, what about acoustic amps? Acoustic amps. I mean, to me, when I think the the top of the line, I think about AER as as one of the top of the line. But when I think about the top of the line that I'm probably going to go out and spend, it's probably going to be an acoustic sonic, or you know. I've, I've heard a lot of praise about the Marshall acoustic amps. When I first started playing guitar and I would ask somebody about acoustic amps, usually the first one they mentioned back then was the Marshall acoustic amps. Now, um, yeah. Now, what about Line 6? Do they have an acoustic amp? I, I'm sure they do. That's where they have all those, you know, they have that all that amp modeling technology. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that as well, so... I'm sure they've got killer acoustic sounds. I mean, I've saw some of their electric amps that had some sounds coming out of them that you wouldn't believe, man. Kind of like the Roland. Roland made uh, an amp that was the same way, and my father-in-law had one, and it was sweet, man. Yeah, so um, I'll tell you something here that's really cool. So, I mean, I mean, acoustic amps, it's so like he said here, he talked about micing up. It's what your preference. I wouldn't necessarily want to mic up if I was playing a, a show because it's really hard to keep your guitar close to the mic and all that stuff while you're singing. It is. It well, is. There's, some, there's some options out there. There's a, a company, I think it's called, I may, I think I'm right, DPA, I think is the company, and they make a mic called, the. it's a core system is what it's called, and it's, it's basically a, a mic that's got a clamp that goes onto your body. It's soft. It won't scratch your acoustic. And you can take it and put it on any acoustic you want, and it's got a condenser microphone that stays right there at your 12th fret if you want, you know, wherever you want it. Yeah, and I think so, I've seen that before, which that's is pretty a good solid. Option. That's a good option if you're a mic and guy. The reason I, I'd say that I like mic and a guitar is because usually when I play live, it's at church. And our, we have a small church. I can put a really good mic, like an SM57 Sure microphone, I can put it right in front of me, and I'm sitting on a stool, I'm not going to get up and move around. If yeah, that's a, the, that's guys, the situation I'm in. Yeah, guys like me, I'm not that coordinated to keep it still. <laughs> You're pretty coordinated. I you, get build into, guitar, you build guitars, man. I get, into the, I get into playing too much for me to keep still. That's why my hummingbirds got, a, uh, got yeah. that pickup. If you're on your feet, man, you know, if you're on your feet or if you're in front of a big crowd that, you know, yeah, it's going to be hard to keep that mic in front of you. But if you got one of those clip-on outfits, that that's a good alternative probably. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we're going to talk about acoustic pickups and stuff here in a little bit. But uh, but is there anything else you want to add to this acoustic, acoustic amp discussion? Uh, I want to add another option. Uh, and this option is, if you've ever seen these line array systems, like, uh, say, the Bose L1 system, I think JBL has an Eon uh, Pro, and then everybody's making them now. Electrovoice makes them, Mackie makes them, but Turbo Sound, all these things, they're like a tower with the line array speakers. They've usually got a small mixer set up on them. Those are cool too, and that's a good alternative if you sing and play. So okay, so out. let me know. Let let us know if you're watching your thoughts, your feelings on all this. Let us know what you think. Like we want to hear your feedback live, not only after the fact. If you're watching it on YouTube, we want to hear your stuff. But yeah, absolutely. but like another thing I was gonna mention or bring up is uh, is recently I had a TC Helcon V100. I love yeah. that thing. I mean, it was in here brand new, but I, I really did a lot of research. I was selling it for a buddy of mine and uh, for a family member of mine and whatnot. I never really heard. I've heard of it, but not. So I was like, you know what? I think I think I'm just going to look this up and just really see. So I watched a few demo videos, man. I mean, you can plug a mic in and guitar and get all these cool effects. Yeah. Which is... Uh, Oh, don't forget about the Tonewood amp. Yeah, actually, uh, the Tonewood amp is another thing I forgot to, to mention. That's something new, too. And there's a couple of guitars that have this technology built into the guitar. But uh, the Tonewood amp is, is like a mag... It's 
got like a magnet thing, man. It sticks inside your guitar. One part of it does, the other part's on the back. And, man, you can get like crazy effects coming straight out of the sound hole of your guitar without plugging up. I mean, it, it, and it, it amplifies your guitar. I don't even know how it does it. But, man, check those out. It's called the Tonewood Amp. It's worth checking out. Yeah, for sure. Um, They're coming up with everything, man. I mean, it's it's unreal the, uh, how far the technology for this topic has come. Yeah, and uh, so so we're fixing to move on to electric amps, by the way. But I want to take a little pause, and I want to say I want you guys to tell us who you want to see for the next interview, like the next person interview. Uh, and we will make an honest yeah, attempt to get yeah, them. Yeah, I'll play some songs, Tyler, at the end here. Uh, no problem. I don't mind to play some songs for you at the end here. Uh, that that works out perfect. So uh, we'll make an honest attempt. So, so Tyler, you guys watching? What is your? We're gonna talk about electric amps. What is your favorite electric amp? What do you have at home? What do you play on when you sit down and play electric guitar? What amp are you picking on? What amp are you shredding on? Whatever. Yeah, we. I'll make an attempt. I got you. So for me, right now, I've got a half stack with a, a 412 half stack cab with a uh, with a Fender Mustang amp head under 50 watt. I love the amp head. I love it. I got a pedal board hooked up to it. That's what I currently jam on right now. At the store, it's also the it's also the demo at the store. So people want to come in, they want to demo an amp, demo a guitar. They can sit down at the stool, plug it into this half stack and play, and they've got a million different effects at their fingertips to test it out. And uh, some some other notable some other notable amps that I like is like a Vox AC30 Top Boost. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Dick Denny created AC30 when Hank Marvin for Britain's Shadows complained this 15 watt Vox 1815 AC15 couldn't be heard over the screams of fans. When they backed Pop Sensation uh, Cliff Richard, Vox introduced a 30 watt AC30 in 1958, offering it 112 and 212 configurations. So I mean, Vox AC30 is just iconic. It's a classic, yeah, it's a classic, man. Yeah, for uh, sure. And then, let's not forget about the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier head. And I actually had one of those in the shop for repair, because I have an amp guy that does repair, man. And that thing sounded so sweet. Like, that thing sounded so extremely sweet. I mean... Yeah, they've got, they've got massive sound, man. Um, yeah. I had a little amp. Um, but it's, okay, it, wasn't, it wasn't very little, but it's it was a Gens Benz. Uh Check those out too, man. Mine was a thirty sixty Pinto triode. You could go thirty watts, or you could go sixty watts. So uh, it was a yeah, nice electric amp. So for a while, I had a Trace Elliott Twin Reverb, and it was basically a copy of the uh, Fender Twin. And I mean, it had a great sound to it. And I bought it. Somebody upgraded the speakers in it. It it sounded great. But I sold. Uh, I ended up selling it, and end up uh, when I got this half stack and whatnot. Hughes yeah. and Kettner, they make they make great amps. I mean, there's a lot of Hughes oh. and Kettners. Yeah, that also that's both categories, the electric and acoustic. And let's not forget about the Marshall JCM 800. Yeah. Or the Super Lead Watt Plexi stuff like that. What I'll about tell you an, an amp that uh, when I first started playing guitar, uh, my father-in-law had a PV5150 half stack. That was a, a kind of a, a classic amp too, man. It was cool. What about those Roland JC one twenties? You ever heard about them? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are solid amps. I really like those amps. Like to me, I like anything. I like anything Roland, man. I love their stuff. Man. Oh, Roland makes great stuff. I mean, and I'm using Roland. I'm using Roland equipment right now. Yeah. Oh, let's also talk about this. Uh, Supro. They make good amps. Yeah, I I don't have any experience with them, but I have I have saw them before. Yeah, and then you know, of course, you got the Fender Twin Reverb and the Fender Bassman. You've got all those notable choices. Fender Bassman, not. man, I I love a Fender Bassman. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, um, so 
uh, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a Fender USA amp in here now for repair, but another cool thing that I got in for repair, or, uh, another cool amp we had in for repair, we had a, uh, all tube, it was a really big combo amp, uh, Marshall combo amp, I forget the exact model number, but it was in for repair, it needed a tube replaced, it needed some, uh, work, work on it to get it back playing, but after uh, me and my uh, me and my amp guy Justin, we got going through it. We got it done, man. That thing sounded amazing. Which it was a British made combo amp by Marshall. Yeah. It had the tubes in it, man. It was a solid amp. British. That that makes me think of yeah, uh, Vox. orange. Oh yeah, orange. And then Vox what, is another one. Yeah. What 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 are your thoughts? You have any experience with the orange amps? Yeah. So I had a little. I, tiny mini orange head one of the little small ones yeah. i had one of those at one point and then i've had several different things it's been pretty cool if yeah. you guys are watching like what do, what do you guys use when it comes to electric guitar amps what do you guys think is like the bread and butter for electric guitar amps like what do you yeah. guys use out there on a daily basis and it don't have to be when you play live what do you use in your own home whether it, is it a little fender champ yeah, I got on a kick where I was plugging up at the house a lot and 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 jamming until I started driving my wife crazy with it. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I bought. Uh, yeah, me and my buddy Will last night were talking on the phone. We were talking about modeling amps, and uh, you know I've got the Fender Mustang amp head here, and it's great. Uh, yeah. This okay. modeling technology is crazy. Hey, Lon Six Spiders are, are, are a great little guitar amp to start. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah tell Archie. I mean, they're great little guitar amps to start. I mean, uh, I've used. So I had a Lon Six. Uh, had a Lon Six in here as a modeling amp. It was a big combo, huge amp. That was not too long ago, and I'll never forget this amp. Is uh, is it had a great killer sound. Well, my buddy. I was guitar teching for his amp went down and he was in a pitch and needed an amp. So we took this amp up to up to uh, Austin City and he played on stage with it. And man, it sounded pretty good. Like yeah. you couldn't tell that it was like a Line Six. I mean, it was a decent size amp. I mean, it was not no small Line Six. It was a pretty big Line Six combo amp. There's there's nothing wrong with with the Line yeah. Six brand, oh. man. I've... And I've got this Vox eighty fifty VT VT stands for Valtronic in the shop yeah. and it sounds great man uh it sounds killer i've got that at 189 i picked that little uh that amp up it's uh it's a pretty solid amp and i've seen i've bought i've bought cabinets before just just like cabinets with a speaker in it where all the stuff's been gutted out yeah i've had guys take those little cabinets and make their own amp out of it yeah yeah they yeah, made... I've, got a, I've got a buddy that's done that before he had a I'll tell you, this is another amp you don't see very often. A Johnson amp is what he had. And, yeah. Uh, this sounded good, man. Oh, for sure. Uh, definitely 100% for sure. Um, I had, at one point throughout my playing career, uh, when I really, really played and got into it, well, I wouldn't say playing, but my career, I remember one of my first electric amps was uh, I had a Fender Champ for a while. Had a little Fender Champ. I played that for a while. I loved it. I thought it was a pretty solid amp, in my opinion. Yeah. And then, also, for another while, I had a uh, Fender... Not a Fender. I want to say... I had a little Marshall. It was like a little Marshall, tiny, tiny, like, champion-sized combo amp. I played that yeah. thing forever. I didn't... At that point in time in my life, I'll be honest with you, and some of you... I didn't know what effects were. I just... Whatever sounded good in my ear, I played. Yeah. And I probably yep. drove my parents crazy. I sounded horrible. But, I mean... I tell you, my first amp... My first amp... I got it the day I got my... I mean, my very... This was when I... Before I ever even really made an honest attempt at playing music. Out of the JCPenney Christmas catalog... My... You gonna my tell your parent, age here? Yeah, my my mom ordered me a Harmony Strat copy from J.C. Penney, and it came with an amp by a company called Gorilla. 
I don't know if you remember yeah, them. I remember those, man. Those things were like the bomb. Those things yeah. were like, you thought you were so cool. You needed a little Gorilla Amp in your, I, your that's guitar. That's what I had, man. I had my Gorilla <laughs> Amp and my little black and white Strat, Harmony Strat copy. And I thought, man, oh. I thought it I was going to the so, big leagues, man. So how I got started was my sister felt felt I tried guitar once and couldn't pick it up. I had a little I had a little cheap first act acoustic. My sister actually she felt bad because she couldn't make it home for Christmas one year. This was like the this was like my freshman year of high school. She felt bad she couldn't make it home for Christmas. So my sister went out and all you familiar with Rocksmith, Rocksmith at the time had a thing where you could buy a whole Epiphone guitar, come with a cable. Yeah. It come with the cable, the game, and everything, and yep. I bought that, and I started playing. Uh, I started playing with the uh, with the line six, not line six. Uh, I started playing with that, and that's what got me into guitar or taught me how to play was was uh, Rocksmith. Yeah. So I started playing on Rocksmith every day and doing that. I thought it was cool, you know. And as I got better, I was like, man, I don't want to play on Rocksmith anymore. I want an actual an actual decent, decent, decent thing. So I think I'm up dropping that uh, Epiphone and breaking the headstock on it. And so uh, Dad ended up going to Guitar Center and he got me a cheap Strat copy, and I yeah. played that for a while and whatnot. Then after that, I just kind of bit the bug more. And I was like, then I found out what a Gibson was, and I was like, man, I want one of those. And then yeah. I looked at the price tag, and I showed Dad the price tag one day on a Les Paul Standard, and he said, uh, "Are you smoking?" <laughs> he said uh, that for for guitar, and so, so. That's, hey, man, it, it's a lot of money to buy a high quality guitar. Yeah. It, so it my first is. my first Gibson was a was like it was like a first or second year when they come out the studio, uh, Les Paul Studio. The thing was yeah. wine red, had dot inlays, man. I played the crap out of that guitar. I mean, you can buy like like we were talking about Eastman's. You can buy you can buy guitars like that that are high quality for less money. But if you're going out here and buying one of these staple brands like Gibson or Martin, you, you know, you're mistaken if you think you're going to buy one che really cheap. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So uh, same with amp same with amplifiers, man. You're yeah. mistaken if you think you're going to go buy a boutique style amp for cheap money. Larry guitars, oh man, those things are popping up on uh, YouTube a lot here lately. How good is a Glary guitar? I mean, they're about equivalent to a cheap end of a Squire. I mean, Glary guitars are, uh, yeah. I've never heard of them. A lot of people are doing like videos where they're doing like taking the cheap Glary guitars and they're like upgrading the pickups in it and electronics. They're like, and then one guy he did a video not too long ago and he was talking about getting my Glary guitar plucked. And whatnot, and just a bunch of crazy stuff. Like, there's people that are taking, like, these really, really cheap, cheap, cheap uh, electric guitars or and stuff, and they're, like, I, doing a lot of modifications. And I, I, I mentioned a, another brand that's similar to that to you here the other day, and I can't remember what it was, man. <laughs> Dang. But, yeah, there's... You know, let's get back into these pickups. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, I want to talk, I wanna talk yeah. about a, I want to talk about acoustic pickups. Yeah, go bit. ahead. So, uh, you know, there there's some debate around around these type different styles of acoustic pickups. There's body sensors, uh, which is kind of what Taylor's got in their expression system. Then there is the famous Pezo pickup, which is the yeah. under saddle. Uh, transducer and then there is um what we were talking about earlier with like the mic setups like sometimes there's a blend between both of those you know yeah and uh tyler um i i'm, I'm a gibson man so i i really can't i mean martin makes some good guitars but i'm a, I'm a tried and true gibson man my co-host here is a tried and true martin guy yep absolutely so so well, but yeah. now that's not all i love i love a lot of stuff man yeah, but he's talking about in my hummingbird. I've got the I've got the LR bag system anthem or whatever it is, whatever they put in there, which is pretty yeah. cool. And uh, K and K, K. I put a K and K pure mini in a guitar. I liked it pretty good. Yeah. But you have no I've, volume control on that. I've got a LR bags made a similar system 
for ukulele. It's called the Uke 5.0, and uh, I've got that LR bag system in one of my baritones. I love it, man. I like LR bags. They make good stuff. Yeah, well, uh... I've got Fishman in my Martin. It's the, it's uh, got a condenser mic and a pickup that blends together. I like yeah. that too. Hey, there's nothing wrong with uh, there's nothing wrong with Martin uh, guitars. There's nothing wrong with what any guitar like. Everything's like everybody has their own preference of what they like. Everybody says, "Hey, this is what I like. This is what I want. This is this is me." Yeah. Whether it come to acoustic guitars, pickups, electronics, yeah, whether it come to anything about musically, everybody has their own what they think is the is the best what they like and uh, whatnot. Yeah, and acoustic guitars, man. There's there's so many different styles of, of acoustics and and different acoustics that lend themselves better to certain genres of music. So a lot of time it depends on what you know, what kind of music you're playing as to which acoustic you like. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of bluegrass players Yeah, I mean I mean, yeah, Martin Martins are great. I'm not saying they're not. Taylor guitars, you know. A lot of people think that Taylor's the best guitar brand there is, you know. It's it, it's a it's a worldwide debate. But I mean, Martins are great guitars. They're handcrafted in the USA. So I mean, Martins are 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 uh, are, are pretty solid guitars. I mean, now we're getting back in the pickup talk as well. They've got so many different like under saddle pickups. They've got the K and K Pizos. Hey, Guilds are great too. I do yeah. like uh I do. Yeah, I I kind of agree on uh, you read Jonathan's comment there. I can't see it. He put I do wish more Martins came with pickups though. Oh yeah, uh a lot of them don't. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I do have uh I I'm I'm not too crazy about the Mexican line of Martins, no offense. I've repaired several in the past couple months here like three or four, and they've all had, like, the same underlying issue. So, therefore, it's kind of, that's just my, on that. But the USA Martins are pretty solid. Um, doesn't your Martin have a pickup in it? Yeah, that's what I was saying. My, mine's got a Fishman Ellipse blend in it. It's got a, a gooseneck condenser mic that's right behind the strings. Then it's also got the Martin Thinline pickup, the classic Peso pickup. And it's got a blend... It's got a blender on it, so you can bring as much of that mic in as you want. I love the thing, and I've had it for, I've had that guitar for 16, 17 years. I've changed the battery like once, and I plugged up, I just plugged it up the other day with you. Yeah, so the biggest issue with the Mexican Martins I've had is what they do on these guitars is they, uh, they put, uh, they put they use this cheap plastic for the nuts. Oh, uh, they put cheap plastic for the nuts. Or yeah, they use this cheap plastic for the nuts. And what happens is it's good at first, but people play these guitars real hard and the string wears down that plastic. So yeah. uh wears down the plastic. So give me a second, take over. Yeah. Well, I mean and you know what you could always do with that with that um uh, cheap plastic nut is you know bring it to somebody like brandon and just have them put you a bone nut on there or a uh you know you could even go with some kind of ivory or you know like a, a lot of people get like fossil mammoth ivory and use that uh camel bone there's all kinds of materials you can use for that man and then you you fix the the underlying issue at that point so uh yeah that's what i would do something like that uh, but back on the acoustic pickups, my opinion, if I'm playing out somewhere, is I'm probably going to play, I'm probably going to blend my, my system and my Martin more towards the mic end of the spectrum, uh, just because I tend to hear a quacky noise in the Peso pickups that I'm not real, not real big on, so, um. That's that's my opinion on it, um, and um, like I said before, I play I play into a mic when I play at church, so I don't even use my pickup when I'm playing it. 
Um, Fair. I mean, I'm not too familiar. I mean, he. I mean, the Fender Acoustic Sonics are great, best acoustic amps, along with the. Uh... We're on pickups, buddy. Well, he no. Somebody <laughs> asked best acoustic oh. amp. Oh yeah, I I got you. Yeah, somebody asked best acoustic, so I was answering. I that. I, I love the acoustic the acoustic Sonics. I love them. I've used the only one I think I've used was a custom, and that's really been the only one for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the first one I bought was an Acoustic Sonic, and it was a cheap one. I don't even, I'm, I think I just bought it literally because it was on sale. I was in there, I was like, dang on, man, that is, that's under 100 bucks." And I picked it up, and it's still here. It's not, it's not going anywhere. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So. so let's, uh, let's more to electric pickups for a minute. So, you know, you've got your, uh, You've got your you got your tried and true JB uh, Seymour Duncan's, and then I mean there a lot of people. There's people that are really particular about their pickups out there. And well, before the phone rang, uh, I'll, I'll ask this real quick, not to cut myself off. But I was talking about the Martins before the phone rang. I just remembered. So they use cheap plastic on the nuts. People play it, and what happens is when they play it, that plastic gets wor- That plastic is so brittle, or so yeah. it gets worn down, and then it ends up having the fret, the string touch the fret. But if you like the guitar, I, t- I told them while you were gone. If you like the guitar, man, get the guitar. If it's if it's the one for you, go ahead and get it. Bring it to somebody like Brandon and have him put you a bone nut on there, and or like a. A you know, tusk, whatever, whatever, whatever you like, yeah. yeah. It's just that that's the problem I've been having or seeing is that people play it and they get real heavy into it, or they and then the string, the string at the nut wears down, and it eventually where it starts touching the fret and whatnot. But if you're a finger picker, you 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 may not have a problem for a long time. Yeah, but uh, but back to uh, electric pickups. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff out there. A lot of different companies that make great electric pickups. And yeah. uh, I mean, I like Seymour Duncan's. I've uh, been introduced to Planet Tones. Those are pretty cool. Um, I mean, there's a lot of local guys that make some pretty cool pickups. Fraylin. I mean, for me, I don't really have a preference. I, I've always been a DeMarzi or Seymour Duncan fan. So that's going to be my choice but i've really kind of liked those planet tones after hearing those see when i did play electric very much i was always playing a strat and so i was into like the tex-mex pickups texas specials and then oh, I, like yeah. la- I like the lace company i like lace pickups so yeah fraylin makes you know good pickups oh and then uh, lawler they make good pickups. Everybody has their own preference of what they like with pickups. Everybody has their own thing that, hey, this is them. This is what I like. This is what I want. This is me. So that's uh, that's always been a pretty cool, pretty cool feature, pretty cool thing, which I uh, I like. Um, pickups like and and this is a debate too. <clears throat> Epiphone Pro Buckers. Well, you ought to. I'm not too familiar with the Pro Buckers, but I mean, they're they're good pickups. I mean, you ever use Epiphone Pro Buckers? No. I mean, they're dope. I've I've never owned. uh, Strange, but I've never owned an Epiphone guitar, man. I mean, they're just like Epiphone Pro Buckers are kind of like, are kind of like I guess the higher end of the Chinese made pickups. I mean, they're all right, I guess. I've never, I mean, they're no PAFs. They're no custom shop uh, PAFs or, you know, Birch Buckers. But they're, yeah. I mean, Jonathan, how do you think they compare to the custom shop or the USA line Birch Buckers, PAFs? How do you think they compare? I mean, I, I wouldn't know because I, I've, I've never owned an Epiphone guitar, so I, I wouldn't know. I just know I can tell a difference when I'm watching even when I'm watching video footage, I can I can tell a difference when somebody's jamming like a Les Paul standard or a Les Paul custom that's got yeah. the burst buckers in it. I can tell a difference in the thickness of the sound than when they're playing the All Epiphone right. of the of the same body. So another another thing too, I was gonna mention as well that I was gonna bring up, I was gonna mention uh, or bring out is. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own tone. Some some people are very particular about what they what amp they use and what pickups are in their guitars. 
it's just all, you know, you know, you go back to that debate sometimes is when when the drummer's drumming, you're not going to be able to tell certain things. And what kind of music you're playing is going yeah. to Yeah, affect what you use, and uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I've never never used the Slash Buckers in the Slash Starter Pack. I've seen one of the guitars. On the Epiphone, well, I've had a couple, but I own an Epiphone now. But the I was going to get an Epiphone Les Paul off a of buddy. Uh, this was probably like my junior year of high school. I was excited. And uh, I had all the cash shaved up. And the dude was like, oh, I want to keep it. After after I, I had it one day. And the guy called me back and said he wants to keep it. That his dad's not going to let him get rid of it. So I had to sell it back. I had to get it back. I was ticked off. Had a hard show. So. Yeah, but I mean... But, uh, I mean, there, there's just many. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you a question because I know you graduated from MI like I did. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Like, how did you feel when you wound your own pickups? Like, like I had to wind mine. I know you did when you went through the program. How did you feel about winding your own pickups? Did you like it? Did you think it was cool? What kind of pickups did you end up going with? And we're going to, I mean, we uh, when we went through the program, they required us to wind our own pickups, which was pretty cool. And, cool. Uh, and uh, the first one I actually didn't break the line on, but the second one I broke the, fr- I broke the line on, had to cut it all off. I'd say it's not easy to do. It's not. The first one I got extremely lucky with. Yeah, mine are... Uh, Mine are about the same, similar to JB. Mine are pretty much about the same, are similar to JB. I uh, think one of mine are a little bit different, uh, because, uh, but they're they're pretty good. I uh, frustrating but fun. This is the one I built, and these are the pickups that are in there. So it's frustrating, but but it, it is. I haven't wound any more. A, I just haven't ventured into it right now at the moment. I've ventured into some other stuff. But, uh, it's, it can be frustrating, but fun in so many different things. Yeah, so, that's what I was going to say. I bet a lot of, uh, I bet a lot of the work of a luthier is frustrating, but fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll tell you from a repair standpoint, some days it's, uh, some days, you know, and you get people that bring in guitars and they just obviously have thrown it in the corner. They have abused it heavily, whatnot. They've not kept it in a temperature controlled room. And these are good guitars. And it's just like, and it's like, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, (laughs) it's kind of sad. I've got a 1970s Epiphone in the shop right now. If you guys want to see it, it is a uh, it is a yellow label Kalamazoo Epiphone acoustic, and it's really really cool, made in Japan, and I think it's a pretty solid little guitar. And I just, it's a not not for sale. It's not for sale. It's a yeah. repair. But yeah. uh, basically, what was happening was the was it has a scarf for one at the heel, at where the and the the scarf for ones on these guitars are really bad about coming undone. So the scarf joint came undone, and we had to re-glue it back and uh, refix the scarf joint, and then we had to refix some of the stuff. So it was really fun process to fix it. Um, it's, a, it's a solid little guitar. Solid now, I'm sure, right? Yeah, for sure. It's a, It's got a great tone. Give me one second, I'll grab it. Yeah, grab that. I'd like to hear it. I love this guitar. He showed it to me, but I I haven't got to hear it. I do love it, just from seeing it.
So, one second here. Man, that thing's got that pretty blonde look to it, you know? What kind, of tuner, what kind of tuner do you use, Brandon? I just use guitar tuner. This is freshly repaired, good strings. And so, so what I it think was, I think he means what brand of tuner are you using? Oh, um, I just use uh, guitar tuner. This is what I mean by it's got a Kalamazoo label on it, made in Japan. So you talking about an app? Yeah, I just use an app. I mean, I do have I have a cord tuner over here that I can plug directly in or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, cool. Got the original case with it. One owner, still the same owner. So look at that. I mean, look at how great this guitar sounds. Yeah, that's pretty, man. She bought this guitar, it's an older lady, in 1970. This wow. Gu this guitar is like 45 years old almost. So, I you're mean... Not gonna wanna, you're not going to want to give that up. <laughs> <laughs> the frets are all nice and shiny in this guitar. What's this camera allows me to show? Yeah. What do you think about the sound, Jonathan? I think it sounds great. Yeah. And I like is, to I like to come by and, and So this it, is where it broke and you person. can't This is where it broke and you can't even tell where it broke at anymore. I'll camera i mean you can see the scarf for one can't even tell where it broke anymore can you nope <laughs> nope that's kind of the cool thing y'all said you want to hear a song so i'll play one let me know what y'all think about that too by the way yeah, I like that. I dig that, man. I want to come by. In your comments, and check that out. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you ought to come by and check it out today because I don't know how long they're gonna. It's <laughs> I don't gonna know be how here. long it's gonna be here. Yeah, so I'm gonna play a song here for you all. Uh, let me know what you think about this guitar. Never heard old Marshall Dillon say Miss Kitty, have you ever thought of running away? Settling down, would you marry me? Miss Kitty, yeah. well, I beg you pretty please She just said yes in the New York minute Never tied a knot with her heart wasn't in it So a kiss as she rode away I'll play that next. Should've been a cowboy. Should've learned to rope and ride. When my six shooter of my mind, only on a cattle drive. Turning a young girl's heart. Just like Jimmy and Rose. Singing those campfire songs. Oh, should've been a cowboy. Might have had a sidekick with a funny name Running wild through the hills chasing Jesse Bay. I'm not that good at that song, so I played a piece of it. It's just a, a good song. So, Brave man. Takes guts to play on here, man, live. Really does. Yeah. 
they're gonna ask me to play Toto Africa. They're gonna ask me to play the hard version. No. No, I don't mind playing it. Should've been a cowboy. Should've learned to rope and ride. And my six foot out of my body, cattle drive. I'm hearing a young girl's heart. Just like eating a mole. Hearing those campfire songs. Oh, I should've been a cowboy. Jonathan, you should have been a cowboy. <laughs> Make it so. Uh, uh, so I'll play a little bit of uh, Toto for Tyler. It's gonna. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever. I bless the rain down in Africa. I'm, I don't know that song too well, but but let's bless the rains down in Africa because my best friend right now is uh, deployed in Africa on a on a mission. So, yeah. so bless the rain down in Africa. Gonna take some time to think that. See, I don't know that song too well. I know everybody knows that one, so, um, one and one more song here since you guys want to hear. Uh,. This is a song I just just learned. Anybody like Chris Stapleton? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was Give Love Me Three it. Steps, so. I know it all that late should probably Well, uh, Talk with him about final thoughts real quick, Jonathan. I've got, uh, real quick, i got to step away for a second. All right. All right, guys. Final thoughts. Anybody got any more questions or comments about amplifiers, uh, acoustic or electric, or pickups, acoustic or electric? If you've got anything, you know, any suggestions on... Uh, you know, what you think we should uh, maybe bring into our next topic for our next uh, for our next episode. What about that? Anybody got any ideas for our next topic, what they think we should cover, or something that they'd like to see in the future on the show? Because, uh, man, we're just working on this thing, trying to, trying to create something good. Can we get Brandon to play another song? I'd say you could probably get him to do about anything on here, man. <laughs> but yeah, um, like I said, man, for, uh, anybody that's out there watching or or, uh, or uh, catches it later, we'll, we'll check the comments again later too. If there's some topic that you're interested in hearing about, if it's something we can cover good, We'll try to cover it. Uh, and if there's a, uh, if there's something that, uh, as far as guest wise, Brandon said earlier, uh, any guests that you'd like to see us try to get on, you know, we can't make promises because, but we promise we'll try to get them on. You know, we got lucky uh, on our second episode and had a great guest, Kevin Collier. Uh, he was an awesome guest. He was easy to interview. He was super nice. He's a killer guitar player. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to having more guests on the show. That's kind of my favorite part of it is when we can get guests on here. 
So, um, yeah. Brandon's kind of left me hanging here. I don't know where he's at. The boot scooting boogie. Can you get Brandon to play boot scooting boogie? Whoo. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that Brandon hasn't checked out on us. I don't know where he's gone to. He's disappeared on me. But I'm sure he'll be back here in a second. Um, matter of fact, we're going to pause just for a second, guys. Hey, Brandon, they're wanting you to play more music, buddy. <laughs> I am back here. What's up? They want you to play more music, buddy. All right, well, I'll play a little bit more music here. Uh, hey, he wants, hey, uh, Jonathan Bryan says that we need to get Cody from Gibson on here. Cody's a pretty cool dude, man. He's, uh, uh, he's a, a great, great leader boss. Uh, I heard he's a really great bass player, but uh, he's pretty cool. Jonathan actually dressed up as him for Halloween. Oh, that's cool. And he actually did a pretty good little thing. Hey, uh, he, uh, he also wants you to play uh, Boot Scoot. I don't know Boot Scoot. I'm going to play this song here that I was playing. I know it all that late. But you should probably leave I recognize That look in your eyes But you should probably leave I know you And you know me We both know Where this is gonna lead And you want me to say I want you to stay But you should probably leave Yeah, you should probably leave If there's still time You to finish your wine Then you should probably leave If it's hard to resist Alright, just one kiss then you should probably leave Cause I know you and you know me We both know where this is gonna lead Want me to stay that I want you to stay Then you should probably leave like a blue devil on a shoulder You've been whispering in my ear And it's getting kinda hard for me To do the right thing here Sun on your skin 6 a.m. I've been watching you sleep. Honey, I'm so afraid you're gonna wake up and say that you should probably leave. Cause I know you and you know me. We both know where this is gonna lead. I want you to say, but you'll probably say that you should probably leave. Yeah, you should probably leave. Oh, you should probably leave. All right, what'd you think about that, Jonathan? <laughs> Both Jonathans. Oh. 